So the, the sort of the classic symbol that indicates the, the uncertainty in any scientific measurement is plus or minus. It's a plus sign over the top of a minus sign. Um, and it's used basically to indicate the uncertainty. So if you make a measurement and you say it's 10 plus or minus 1, you're saying, well, it, my best guess is it's 10, but it could be 9 or it could be 11. And really in science, any measurement you make, there has to be a measurement of uncertainty too. You really can't just give a number. It has to be, you know, how well did you measure that number? Because otherwise there's no way of using it. You've no way of knowing. If somebody else goes and measures it and gets a different number, you want to say, well, is, there, you know, is one, or other, one or other of you wrong, or are you just within the uncertainty? One person might measure it as 10, and the other person might measure it as 12. All these different numbers should we be worrying? And until you quote an error bar on it, you really haven't actually defined what the measurement is that you've actually made. It's far from a trivial thing to do. It's this classic case that there are known unknowns and there are unknown unknowns. Right? The known unknowns are things that are just kind of, you know, things that you knew were there in your experimental apparatus. I could only measure this to this accuracy. My ruler wasn't that good. Um, all those kinds of things, so where you actually have some finite precision in your measurement. And those you can usually estimate reasonably well because you know what your experimental apparatus is, you can make a whole series of measurements, for example, and see how different the answers come out every time. That gives you a pretty good measure of the uncertainty. But then there are the unknown unknowns, which are kind of uh, also known as often as systematic errors, things which are kind of buried so deep in the whole thing that you actually have no way of knowing what they are. And they're more problematical. Um, so, for example, one of my, one of my favourite plots in astronomy um, is a plot of how far the Sun is from the center of the galaxy. And the unit that astronomers usually use to measure this is a thing called kiloparsecs, thousands of parsecs. And when I started in astronomy, the answer was 15 kiloparsecs, about 1980 thereabouts. So the answer was 15 kiloparsecs. We were 15 kiloparsecs away from the center. But if you followed the literature over time, you find that that number went down and down and down. So by the 1990s, we were about eight kiloparsecs from the center of the galaxy. Now, this wasn't because we moved. It wasn't because we were getting closer to the center of the galaxy, just because the measurements were changing with time. But the interesting thing was that at any given moment, so in, the, you know, in 1985, if you'd asked all astronomers how far away are we from the center of the galaxy, they would all have quoted you an answer with a very small error bar. Because actually the random errors, these, these uncertainties that we know about, actually were getting quite small. And they all agreed with each other, but actually they were all wrong. And that's because everybody had the same sort of systematic calibration in there. Maybe there was some very basic calibration that had gone into it, where there was something that was just something wrong in the calculation. And so there's this, the, these strange effects that you can have these big systematic errors that don't behave the same way as random errors. Things don't just bounce around in a random way between one measurement and another. You can have everybody all wrong in the same direction one way or the other. And sort of more worryingly, and something that scientists like to try and kind of push under the carpet because we're a bit embarrassed about it, is that the psychology in this as well. In that if, you know, in 1985, I'd made a measurement of the distance to the center of the galaxy when everyone else said it was 10 kiloparsecs, and I got an answer that said it was 7 kiloparsecs, I'd have thought, well, I must have done something wrong, and I'd have quietly stuck it in a filing cabinet somewhere and forgot about it. Whereas if I got an answer that sort of agreed with the consensus and got the same answer as everybody else, I'd probably have gone out and published it and say, look, I've come up with this clever new way of doing it, and look, I get the right answer. So there's also in this error process, there's actually psychology. As I say, scientists are very uncomfortable about this because we like to have this idea that what we're doing is kind of objective and above such things. But actually, there is a lot of, uh, of sort of human interaction and psychology in the way we do science as well, which can also introduce errors into, into such measurements. If a measurement is really, really uncertain, so if there's something so bad that you're not even prepared to say what it might be plus or minus, um, then the convention in science, actually, I'm not sure if it's all across all of science, it's certainly the case in astronomy, is you put a colon after. So if you said, measured something and it came out as 15 kiloparsecs, but you were, you know, it was a sufficiently dodgy measurement that you couldn't even say whether it was 15 plus or minus 1 or 15 plus or minus 10, but nonetheless you thought you know, it might be an interesting number, you put 15 colon kiloparsecs.